This video is brought to you by Squarespace. More on Squarespace later in the video. guys there is an officer behind me so we're about to get a final answer on this whole uh, shebang let's see what goes at first I thought he was gonna ignore me but nope a fair amount of people said they wanted more after watching the first aerodynamic car video so I decided to go ahead with the revisions I had outlined at the end of the first video along with adding the most frequently mentioned suggestion without doing a full recap of the aerodynamics presented in the first video Suffice to say, teardrop shape good, truncated and blocky shape bad. If you treat the air gently, it will return the favor. For example, a mirror is basically a truncated teardrop. Features such as mirrors can account for as much as 5% of a car's overall drag. Many comments pointed me to cars I had never heard of, such as the Aptera, Lightyear Zero, and my favorite of all was this Omega car. It was the Lightyear Zero, however, that really got the mental gears turning for this channel. One problem I didn't appreciate in creating Mark 1 was the drag created by the underbody of the car. There are two main solutions, make the air go around or make the bottom of the car as smooth as the rest of the vehicle. I really wanted to do an A-B test between making the air go around and making the underside more aerodynamic. A local shop thought all this was fun and let me put the car up on their lift. After inspecting the underbody, it became apparent that an effective solution to making it more aerodynamic was out of the reach of this project. So the A-B test would have to be making the air go around the car or leaving it alone altogether. Then it was back to Lowe's where I picked up the necessary materials and got to work. Legally nothing on the car can go lower than the rims, so that was the limit of how far I could extend the skirts. I protected the foam and car with tape, used plumber's goop to glue them together, and reinforced everything with more duct tape. The local Lowe's had colored duct tape, so I decided to use it to make the car look super fly. Removing the roof rack was a common suggestion, but again this was out of reach for the project. It would require removing the interior of the roof to get at the retaining screws and then welding the screw holes shut. But the gaps in the rack were easily sealed with tape. For this project it was back to the cardboard wheel covers which were again gooped in place. A common suggestion was to add fairings to the body to cover the rear wheels. Looking at the geometry around the rear wheel it would have required permanent changes to that area to be effective, so I passed. But I'm sure it is a more effective solution. With all that done, it was time to see how it stacked up against the stock car. Here is the car before my first run. You can see I have the roof rack taped off. And we have the wheel covers and side and nose ground effects. Okay, we put down 161.1 miles. Average temperature was probably like 73 and it is humid super humid around like 80% and that's why we are doing a a re-baseline this was slightly more efficient than the last baseline probably because the new route was flatter and then it was time to hit the road with the skirts wheel covers and roof rack taped off a trip indicator says I've already lost about 30 miles but I've only gone 20 miles and just looking at my average efficiency on that little bottom right dial it seems pretty low and it kind of feels like I'm just riding on like a giant vacuum suction hose or something it just feels like a lot stiffer like I have more grip kind of hard to tell just because I'm going in a straight line but that's where I'm at and we'll find out when we get back to the pump what actually happened This represented an 8.3% increase in efficiency, and that was before even adding a tail. It would appear in this case that pushing the air around the car was more beneficial than the loss due to increased car frontal area. With that question answered to my satisfaction, it was time to add the rear extension but with a few differences from the previous car. I'm all about efficiency. In fact, I should probably legally make it my middle name. When Squarespace offered to sponsor this video, I wanted to see if their website creation and hosting services would be a good fit. Overall, I was very happy about the efficiency with which I could create a beautiful and effective website. Right now I need to get the message of my next company out to the world, with products coming later. Squarespace does that for me. But what would you need a website to do for you? With their easy to use templates and intuitive editing tools, even a complete novice like me can build a great website to get their message out to the world, create an online website to sell their products, 
use the included video studio to post original content, you name it. You can also set up your domain and web address through Squarespace. Squarespace has the easiest and the best tools for setting up a website no matter what your goals are. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use this URL on the screen or the link in the description to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. The extended tail was constructed using the same methods as the previous tail. However, the result was a bit different. The top of the tail was curved more towards the ground, and the bottom of the tail was kept as low to the ground as I dared without knocking it off on less than perfectly even streets. Also, I did not taper in the sides as aggressively as the original, as too much taper on the sides seemed to be a large source of drag on the first car. The overwhelming number one suggestion from the last video was to add clear plastic over the void left in the first tail necessary to keep the tail lights visible. My local Lowe's had some pretty stiff clear plastic that would do the job. It wasn't perfect, but it sort of worked. A little heat was used to contour it to the tail light, and then it was popped into the recess and secured with duct tape. On this tail, an officer would be unable to see my license plate if I was pulled over due to the truncated section sitting much lower to the ground. So I closed it off and added a mount for a license plate. Alright guys, here is the car in all of its glory, finally done, heading out in a few hours to get in my efficiency run. You can see the clear plastic that I added that everybody was recommending. Somebody in the comments said this reminded them of a Cybertruck, and I can't say I disagree. So I think for this video we're going to call this the Cyber Subaru. And this time I went with blue, because uh, the license plate has to be lighted. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, my favorite feature by far, I think this adds the most efficiency. We have the racing stripes here on the front. I think that's going to account for most of our efficiency gains. So I'm really excited about those. And um, no vortex generators on this one this time. You can see here on the bottom, it's kind of hard to see with the camera, but there's a, there's a lip here. And so that's going to be as effective as any vortex generator probably. It'll do its own tripping. Uh, we, you know, in the airplane world, we call that like a trip strip. It's a little bit big to be a trip strip, but there's no need for a vortex generator is my point when you have something like that there. There she is, the Cyber Subaru. Then it was time to see if this whole getup would increase the efficiency or not. So with the full body kit, my first gas bar went down at 68.7 gallons. So that's actually a lot less than the, what was it, 85 with just the ground effects. So yeah, this is telling me it's way less efficient, this whole getup. So that's a shock. I love these people, you get this delayed reaction, they come by you and then they realize that they saw something really strange and then they drop back and watch you for a while and then uh, go on their merry way again. Some people notice right away and just follow you to see what's going on but a lot of these guys you get this delayed reaction, it's funny. As always, pump number five. And we're going, the baseline was 4.403 gallons. And we are at, uh, yeah, still same price, 559. Damn. Despite the early evidence pointing to lower efficiency, it actually came out to a 17.9% increase in efficiency over baseline. I thought it would be interesting to go to the desert with some smoke grenades left over from previous projects and use them to see if I could visualize airflow over the car. Yeah, so unfortunately the lake bed is closed. We're going to go find something else and uh, some empty roads, I think. See if we can get this done somewhere else. Rather than an empty road, though, we found another small lake bed to deploy some smoke on. Not much thought was put into activating the smoke, and I soon realized I had to crawl into my car through the open window once everything was set. It was pretty clear on the top of the tail, at least, that the air was following the extended contour. Uh, it's brand new. 
until anything happens. I really wanted to compare the new tail to the old tail since I hadn't hit the 20% efficiency increase I was looking for. So I removed everything but the wheel covers and also the lower part of the new tail that would act as sort of an air trap. Car looks incredibly plain now. Let's see how it goes with the new tail. The version 2 tail. And then it was time to hit the road with the new tail. At first I thought it was going to ignore me, but nope. two officers and they completely ignored me they did not care so there's no way to say that they didn't see me or anything I rolled through right in front of them they followed me for a little while and I think we have our answer on whether the police care or whether it's legal so So if I go over 3.738, I think it was, this is less efficient without the skirts. If it's under 3.7, it's more efficient without the skirts. There you go. A 7.9% efficiency increase over baseline meant that the second tail was considerably less efficient than the first tail had been which was a surprise to me. So it was back to putting tufts on the car and trying to get an idea of what the problem was. The tufts on the top of the car were laying nice and flat, and I may have been able to slope the tail down further and still get good airflow. The tufts on the lower sides and tail light area indicated the airflow was somewhat chaotic, but not nearly as bad as the original tail. This is a confusing result, as the gas pump indicates this new tail is much less efficient than the first tail, but the tufts indicate otherwise. This makes me question whether or not basing fuel burn on how reliably the gas pump fills the tank to the same point each time is a good method. Perhaps there are other reasons for these results. Leave a comment if you have an idea. Reviewing the footage of the tuft run was interesting. Check out this Mercedes. I've never seen one, no idea what the model is, but those engineers seriously paid attention to the aerodynamics of the car. Also look at this semi-truck. It has the skirts between the trailer wheels, which is common, but something I never noticed before was the ground effects on the cab. Apparently they also found that making the air go around was better than letting it go under. That's it for upgrading this car. Some of the cars that were mentioned in the comments of the last video really got my imagination going, so I don't think I'm done with making cars more efficient on this channel. I really enjoyed this. If you also enjoyed the journey, check out the video on the left as well. You may like that one too. If you'd like to help out the channel, hit the like button, share the video, and have a great day.